One of the things you'll need to make this mod is a longer cord for the extruder motor. Now, I'm not going to disconnect mine. What I've chosen to do was grab another cord that I have, uh, grab some male to male jumpers, and I'm going to basically wire this in between and just extend my cord. Um, that is for two reasons. One, I don't have to open my CPU and disconnect and reconnect the motor in there, which isn't that hard, but um, I just really rather not at the moment. And the other is because if I decide that this isn't working and I want to go back, all I will have to do is unplug this from the existing cord and plug the existing cord back into the motor instead of going back and rewiring it. So it makes it a little bit quicker. Um, this is kind of a little uh, hack on a plug and play setup for it. So we'll see what happens. All right, welcome to my floor here. One of the first things we're going to be doing in order to mount this puppy, which is going to go right here. Um, is going to be removing the side spool holder we put on down here and returning the spool to its original position at the top because it will feed straight down into the motor. So we're going to get started on that real quick. Alright, so I've retrieved my channel locking nuts and the uh, hex head screws from my mount here that was my side mount. And we'll toss that aside for now and we will replace this in the top back in the original position. So what we're going to do is we're going to slide these in here. Um, and then we will screw down with the spool. So I will show you that as I finish it. All right, I've got the spool holder back on. As you can see, I reversed it as the direct drive extruder is gonna sit on this side just above the nozzle. I want the filament to go straight down into it and not through the back. The next step is going to be to remove these and <clears throat> place this on the carriage. Now as you can see it is possible to do this one at a time. I started with the left, laced it through. Basically the mount we're using is going to replace this spacer. Um, and now I'm going to remove the right side, slide that down into where the spacer is, remove the spacer and I will re-bolt that. And that way we don't have to remove the whole carriage. It is pretty simple, one and then two. As you can see, I have started to mount the motor and the extruder mechanism. Um, I'm not going to go too far yet because I do need to get a little bit of Bowden tube in there, but I need to make some measurements. So I'm going to be doing some fitting and putting everything on and, and kind of adjusting. It will take a little bit of work. But um, the other reason that I'm using the plug and play cord is because I do also want to try this out. Now, Capricorn was nice enough to send me a rather large setup for their Capricorn Bowden tubing. Um, I am going to use a little piece of this for the direct drive here. Um, and I'm also going to use this handy tool for cutting it straight, which will now be added to my arsenal. It's a nice little tool. Um, but we are going to be unplugging the direct drive eventually and going back to the regular setup to test out this, this full length of Bowden tubing as well. So. Alright, so I've got everything pretty much lined up and bolted down on this end. Um, I did use a minimal amount of cap tubing in there. Basically what I did was squeeze them together, put the cap tube on one side, took a measurement that was slightly long, then slid the other end over and marked how much needed to be cut off and removed it. Um, that was pretty simple. The thing about the wires is um, I wanted to make sure that the right wires you can see down here on the end these wires cross over they're not in the same order they begin in um, and I wanted to make sure that those ended up at the proper place on the connection here to the motor itself um, which it came in really handy that not only were my jumpers colored my cable is colored too so basically what I did was just followed each line to make sure that it ended up in the right spot we should be all hooked up all, all right already so the next thing is to grab the filament and turn this thing on. All right, got everything all hooked up, got the filament in there. There is my cap tube, and this is the direct drive mod. Um, this here <clears throat> is for pulling over the wires and zip tying. Um, and I believe everything is wired correctly. So before we turn it back on, I do have some action in my X carriage here. So. The last thing I want to do is find this eccentric nut down here and tighten that up and then we will turn it on and see how it prints. 
All right, as you can see, by tightening the electric, uh, electric eccentric nut spacer back here, um, I removed all of the wobble out of the X carriage. There is a video on that that I have on my channel, um, but that's nice and handy. So now I'm all hooked up. I am getting ready to uh, test the extruder here. Uh, we are currently raising our hot end temperature. We are going to 220 PLA, so we want it a little bit hotter than usual to let it flow, and we're at 127 right now. So in just a moment, we will fire this bad boy up and see how it's extruding. You can see the nozzle there. Um, I did have a little bit of trouble <clears throat> because these were too close together. Let me turn the light on here. Uh, so I had to tighten them upward into here and downward into there as much as I possibly could uh, in order to get the little piece of Bowden tube flush with this to get the filament to feed through. Um, but once I did that, you can see that little gap in there, and you can see that little blue, there's cap tubing in there, which is good because it actually eliminated a little bit of shear that might have happened because they weren't exactly dead center on each other, so it's given it a little space to, to curve over just a slight amount. Uh, we are now at 190. I could probably try extruding and get something out, but I'm just going to let it reach temperature all the way first. Um, 200. That's pretty good. I do like the look of this. It's pretty clean. Um, like I said, it's not going to remain this way. One of the first things I will be printing is a uh, couple of new zip ties to get these cords up and over and out of the way. Um, I was thinking after I had done this, it would have been possible to thread them through that hole there, but this edge could be rather sharp and might uh, eventually tug and rip on this since it's not protected like this one. So uh, maybe eventually I'll thread it through here if I decide to keep this mod, but like I said, for now we are testing it out. We're going to do some TPU stuff, and then we are going to go back to the Bowden tube because I do want to test the full length of that cap tubing and see if it is an improvement over the regular Bowden tube that comes with this machine. So we just hit 220. I'm going to go to control. Oh, excuse me. I don't know what I'm doing. Prepare, move axis, one millimeter, extruder. And let's see if anything comes out. Might not have had it fed all the way in there. Let's see here, you can see. Ah, see. Now, the motor should be turning the other way, which means that I do have two of my wires crossed. So we're gonna have to go hop at the back and switch those, and I will be right back. Alright, so I believe I've corrected the problem. Um, I was looking at the clasp upside down, so I actually wired the whole thing in reverse, so uh, we should be good to go now. One of the hazards of doing it the way I'm doing it, instead of just directly uh, getting a longer plug to plug directly in. Um, like I said though, I didn't have to open my machine up to do this, so I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, we are almost back up to temperature again, so... All right, so I think I got everything dialed in. I do have a little bit of retraction setting issues to deal with, as you can see from the little bit of stringing there. Um, this is a 100% infill TPU print. Um, this is the dragon's head you've seen me print several times before. Um, this is the first time I printed it in TPU. 
and I'm actually pretty pleased with how it came out. It's hard to see on my camera here because of the light and the fact that it is a translucent TPU. So um, in the next few videos we're going to be doing some reviews of some TPU products um, and they are going to be white and black so you should be able to see the detail a lot more clearly. I did also do a couple of calibration cubes um, and they came out pretty nice. Now this one here you can see some vibrational ringing there. This was actually done at 200% speed. Um, this one, let's look at the X, uh, you don't see the ringing. This is at standard speed. This is running at um, 55 millimeters per second. So um, this one's 110. Still came out dimensionally accurate. The reason you get more ringing at those higher speeds is because of the uh, extra weight on the X carriage. So it causes excess vibration uh, through X and Y movement. That uh, is one of the major disadvantages of printing with direct drive is that you do need to slow it down. This was actually printed at 35 millimeters per second. So um, really slow. That's why it's such a tiny model. But uh, it came out pretty well. And we are actually going to switch over and start doing our TPU reviews for the TPU Max I got from Polymaker. So stay tuned for that. And we will be getting all the use we can out of this direct drive before switching back and testing out that long cap tube that Capricorn was nice enough to send me. And as always guys, I am Technivorous. Thanks for watching this video. Don't forget to hit the like button. You can subscribe right here by clicking on the icon. And I put a couple videos up in the corner. One of them is going to be my latest video, my latest upload. And the other one is going to be what YouTube recommends for you. So feel free to check those out. Don't forget to hit that bell for notifications down below. And we'll see you guys next time.